welcome to the lecture on mechanics of metalworking and analysis methods. So, we will uh, try to be aware about some of the uh, terminologies in this what are the mechanics for the metalworking processes which uh, and, and some of the terminologies uh, will, we will try to be acquainted with which will be required to analyze the operations in metalworking. Now, when we try to analyze that, uh, we know that uh, we have studied about the uh, uh, deformation theories, we have studied about the uh, plasticity theories in that we have uh, this seen many points like we have discussed many points like what are the conditions in the case of plastic deformation like the value of uh, you know uh, uh, this uh, poison ratio or uh, also the other uh, you know uh, constancy of volume uh, conditions and all that. So, we will discuss about uh, certain things because in, in most of the cases you, you are concerned with uh, uh, the reduction of the uh, you know or the change in the dimension of the product uh, or, the, or the cross section of the material and in that case uh, you need to you find the amount of stress which is required to do that and what will be the associated things which will be occurring with that. So, that will be uh, discussed. So, when we uh, talk about the uh, you know uh, uh, mechanics in that case the first thing which we uh, uh, come across in those uh, cases is the uh, uh, constancy, constancy of uh, volume approach. So, so for uh, uh, constant uh, volume condition so in that case uh, what we get is that epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 plus epsilon 3 is 0 because we know that if the uh, strain is there in one direction positive then certainly uh, you have uh, uh, you know in the transverse direction you have uh, the uh, strains in negative direction. So, that way uh, this epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 plus epsilon 3 is coming out to be 0. Now, when we talk about the uh, metal working processes uh, then what we see that uh, normally uh, when we talk about the stresses and we know that stresses are of um, primarily two nature either tensile or compressive. So, uh, we take tensile stresses as the positive one and the compressive stresses as the negative one. So, but uh, when we talk about the analysis of metal working, so normally we deal with the compressive force only because normally the compressive forces are applied. So, in such cases uh, in, in the cases of this metal working analysis normally these uh, uh, compressive uh, uh, directions they are not taken as negative because every time you have to do it in the negative manner. So, so normally uh, uh, since they predominate uh, in the analysis we normally take it uh, as uh, the positive one uh, and for that we have the different convention. So, suppose uh, we are compressing the material in that case uh, if from uh, the height h naught to h 1 we are compressing. So, if suppose the uh, for initial height h naught and final height h 1. So, if you look at the, the, the compressive strain which is developed. So, so as we know that uh, compressive strain will be so if you read write it like this a so compressive strain or uh, so now in this case uh, we will have the definition uh, uh, h naught to h 1 and this will be d h by h. So, it will be ln of h 1 by h naught. Now, uh, since the um, h 1 is smaller than h naught, so it will be uh, uh, you know you, we will write it like minus of ln uh, h naught by h 1. So, uh, uh, because the h, h naught is more than h 1. So, uh, normally what we do is uh, uh, we, we write these uh, uh, in this uh, strain 
in the case of this plastic deformation as a minus of ln h0 by h1. So, basically this is uh, this is the strain, but we write when we uh, put this subscript uh, C that is for compressive uh, you know strain when we do the metal working analysis in those cases we write uh, we, we remove this negative sign and we write ln of h1 by h0. Similarly, if you try to find the conventional engineering strain, so for conventional strain. Now, in the case of conventional strain what we see is it will be h1 minus h0 by h0. So, again it will be uh, h1 by h0 minus 1. So, now what we see that uh, normally you have the negative values, but uh, when we talk about the compressive uh, you know uh, values. So, we will write the engineering uh, strain that is in compressive. So, it will, it will be uh, h naught minus h 1 by h naught. So, when we talk about the compressive value it will be like h uh, 1 minus uh, then h 1 by h naught. So, this is how uh, we normally have the convention when we talk about the deformation in the case of uh, metal working. Now, uh, further uh, we uh, know that uh, when you are trying to increase or decrease the length associated with that there will be the change in the reduction of the area or so. So, normally we also express we, we also express in terms of reduction of area. So, in that the commonly used term is the, the fractional reduction. So, the, the fractional reduction will be uh, defined as r and this will be a naught minus a 1 divided by a naught. So, this is the uh, original area which was there cross functional area which was there uh, earlier then uh, what is the final area and, and then divided by the original area and that is known as the fractional reduction of the area. So, uh, if you take the constancy of volume relationship now uh, as we know that uh, you have uh, uh, the change in length and associated with that you have the change in the cross sectional area and if the volume is constant then the uh, you know uh, area multiplied by length uh, it will be always same. So, you will have a 1 into l 1 will be a 2 into l 2 uh, that is your a naught into l naught. So, uh, what we see is that uh, r you can uh, uh, we are writing it as so here we write it as 1 minus a 1 by a naught. So, it will be uh, r will be 1 minus a 1 by a naught or a 1 by a naught is written as 1 minus r. Now, if you uh, see the definition for the uh, strain to strain value it is uh, ln of l 1 by l naught. So, it will be ln of a naught by a 1 because uh, uh, L1 by L0 will be A0 by A1 because A0 L0 will be equal to uh, L1 into A1 into L1. So, you can write this as 1 by 1 minus R because it will be 1 by 1 minus R. So, ln of 1 by 1 minus R. So, this way uh, you can find uh, so these are these are the terminologies which are mostly used fractional reduction in area or the compressive uh, strains or so uh, and they can be used for uh, the analysis of the uh, processes. So, you may have uh, suppose uh, if you take the example certain example like uh, if suppose you have a problem and it is said that uh, you have a bar uh, which is a, a bar of length L is uh, uh, basically uh, uh, doubled in length. 
So, uh, you may be told that you find these uh, different uh, you know value of the engineering strain or true strain or the you know uh, reduction. So, suppose a bar of length L is doubled in length that is it becomes L from L to 2 L. In those case if you try to find the E it will be uh, L 2 minus L 1 by L 1. So, L 2 L 2 is nothing but 2 L 1. So, it will be 2 L 1 minus L 1 by L 1. So, it will be 1. Similarly, if you try to find the uh, true uh, strain then in that case it will be ln of L 2 by L 1. So, it will be ln of 2 L 1 by L 1 and in that case it will be ln of 2. So, ln of 2 value is 0 0.693. So, that will be uh, found out. Similarly, if you try to find the r. So, r will be uh, suppose. Uh, so, r you can get is as a 1 minus a 2 by a 1. So, so that way uh, uh, you can find uh, so, it will be 1 minus a 2 by a 1. Now, a 2 by a 1 is nothing but l 1 by l 2. So, it will be 1 minus l 1 by l 2 and l 2 is 2 l 1. So, 1 minus l 1 by 2 l 1. So, it will be 1 minus 1 by 2. So, 0 0.5. So, this way uh, when a bar of length l is doubled in length in that case uh, it is uh, basically uh, uh, you can calculate this true strain or engineering strain or the fractional reduction uh, values in, in such uh, uh, fashion. Uh, you can also calculate if it is uh, halved in length and that way you will have the uh, values coming to the negative side in the case of engineering strain and further you can calculate uh, you know uh, other values uh, like fractional reduction or the you know uh, uh, you know uh, true strain values and in compression whatever we have discussed. So, that way you can uh, uh, find those uh, uh, values. So, uh, let us take uh, for example, that if the specimen is uh, halved in length now in this case uh, L 1 becomes L 1 by 2. So, we can find the uh, engineering strain and engineering strain will be L 1 by 2 minus L 1 by uh, basically L 1. So, it will be minus of 0 0.5, but if you take the engineering uh, strain uh, in, in compressive uh, direction compressive strain engineering compressive strain in that case we will uh, do the reverse L 1 minus L 1 by 2 and divided by L 1. So, so it will be uh, basically 0 0.5. So, this is what the convention is used in the case of uh, uh, the uh, metal forming analysis where you largely you are trying with the you are dealing with the compressive stresses. Similarly, if you go for the uh, true strain value. So, true strain value also ln of final uh, length by original length. So, L 1 by 2 by L 1. So, it is uh, ln of 1 by 2. So, ln 1 minus ln 2. So, it will be minus of ln 2, but if you talk about the uh, true compressive uh, strain it will be ln 2 because it will be l 1 by l 1 by 2. So, so it will be so that way it will be ln 2. Okay. And if you look at the uh, reduction of area, so it will be l 1 by l 1 by 2 and then 1 minus that. So, it will be something like minus 1. So, that is how you, you try to find these parameters whenever required uh, in the you know metal working analysis. Coming to the analysis part of uh, the you know metal working operation we discussed about uh, the zone in which we are going to confine and do the study about the metal working processes. Now, uh, what is there in that basically you are applying the stresses then you have uh, many conditions you have the um, equations you are getting you have equations of equilibrium you have uh, the to uh, adjust the forces which are up, uh, being applied and you have to uh, make them you know balanced in certain directions and accordingly you try to uh, get the you know you know values uh, you try to find these uh, stress and strain values at different points. So, that is what the aim is there in the case of metal forming in every uh, uh, point of the deformation zone uh, in the deformed region you try to find the velocity you try to find the stresses or the strain. So, basically your aim is to 
to, to find velocity, stress, strain at every point in deformation zone. in deformed zone of workpiece. Now, uh, you have many ways uh, for uh, approaching the problem in that case, because ultimately we what we are interested in that we want to know that uh, with what velocity uh, the material is deforming or, or uh, you know the stresses or strain uh, at every point in that. Uh, so, we are interested into it and, and you have many uh, ways and basically uh, you have uh, three sets of equation which will be uh, coming up which has to be solved which are to be solved to find all these values. Now, these uh, three sets of equations are that you have first the static equilibrium of force equations. So, uh, you have uh, the static equilibrium of force equations which are to be uh, you know solved. Then you have the levi mises equation which so, this levi mises equation will express the relation between the uh, stress and the strain rate. So, based on that you will have the equation and you will find uh, you will use these equations for further finding and then you have the yield criterion. So, uh, you have uh, basically uh, 9 independent equations and uh, uh, they are to be uh, solved and you have the uh, 9 also the unknowns you have uh, 6 uh, stress components and uh, 3 the velocity component or the strain component and these uh, are to be solved and you have the 3 uh, this way you have the 9 equations and you have 9 unknowns and they are to be you know solved. So, normally the solution is uh, certainly tedious, you analytical equation I mean uh, solution is not that way easy uh, to solve them and uh, you have many methods which are uh, used and the different methods which are used are the you know slab method. So, this uh, slab method uh, it assumes homogeneous deformation. So, in this case uh, when we are doing an analysis and you have uh, some element of uh, you know certain shape suppose you have uh, uh, a square element is there. So, once you uh, deform it then it will be uh, converted into a rectangular element. So, that way you have a homogeneous kind of deformation that is assumed in the case of uh, slab method. Similarly, you have another um, approach which is used is uniform deformation energy method. Now, uh, in these cases what we is done is that uh, uh, you are applying you are giving the uh, energy I mean uh, for deforming the uh, work piece. Now, uh, from these uh, you know work of plastic deformation you are trying to calculate the average stress value. So, so that way uh, uh, that is why it is known as the uniform deformation energy method. So, in these cases uh, uh, you must know that what is the work done on the machine uh, on the material and based on that you find uh, you predict these uh, average forming stresses. The second uh, the third method is the slip line field theory method. So, uh, it is uh, basically calculating the point by point these stress values are uh, you know calculated uh, and uh, normally we assume the plane strain conditions in, in such case and for every uh, point by point the value of the stresses are uh, calculated. Then uh, another method is upper and lower bound method.
Now, this is done based on the uh, limit analysis and uh, uh, basically it will be using the, so, so this upper and lower bound uh, method you will have uh, the limit and you will uh, use the reasonable uh, you know stress value and the velocity field uh, so that you calculate uh, basically the bound within which these uh, actual forming loads should be you know lying. So, based on that uh, you, you calculate these uh, parameter values. Then uh, the, the last uh, method is the finite element method. Now, uh, this is basically also known as the matrix method and uh, it will be allowing the large increment of deformation uh, for the rigid plastic materials and uh, uh, basically a lot of uh, computational time is reduced in this. This is the uh, uh, new approaches I mean latest approach which is used uh, and in these cases the a large amount of uh, this computational time is saved. However, the um, you need to have the proper understanding uh, for uh, you know making the matrix which is to be solved. So, basically all these methods uh, are in the order of increasing complexity and the, the slab method is the most uh, you know easy one which is basically normally used for the analysis of the metal forming uh, processes. So, if you try to see that uh, if we try to analyze this uh, slab method. So, this uh, slab method it assumes that the metal is uh, deforming. So, it assumes that metal deforms in deformation zone uniformly. Now, the thing is uh, the meaning is that if you have a square uh, grid element and if it is going under the um, application of stresses. So, it will be converted it will be you know having a rectangular type of uh, you know uh, element it will be converted into a rectangular type of element when it is you know uniformly uh, basically uh, you know deformed. So, that is what uh, um, uh, this approach is and this approach is used for uh, so you have all these conditions we apply we apply these uh, uh, you know force uh, balance equations you apply the uh, levi meiss equation you apply also apply in the you know yield criterion and based on that we try to calculate the the stress uh, values so uh, we suppose uh, if we, when we do uh, for certain analysis suppose uh, you know, we do for uh, the strip drawing of you know, a plate so suppose you have uh, a die uh, which is uh, uh, going like this and then you have uh, this die has certain width and uh, similarly you have uh, this as another die uh, on the top as well as on the bottom. And uh, then if suppose you have uh, uh, one strip is there uh, the strip is basically uh, you know we are this is strip basically we are applying this this is a, this middle point and uh, this is suppose you want a strip is taken here. Now, if you look at this this is coming to uh, suppose meeting at this point. So, this angle is alpha that is 2 alpha this is included angle. Now, uh, you want to uh, uh, change the thickness of this strip and later on this strip will come of this thickness. Now, uh, in this case uh, this is uh, uh, your uh, this is this way you have the uh, width of this strip. So, you are assuming the width to be constant in that case you have constraint from both the sides and this length is basically going in this particular uh, direction. Now, what is uh, shown is that you have a certain height uh, on this side and this is uh, reduced to uh, this small size and how you will uh, analyze this uh, process. Now, if you look at uh, this, uh, so here you apply this pressure P and uh, similarly you have this, sub, this strip is subjected to uh, a stress of uh, sigma x in uh, this direction and if this is taken as the origin 
So, if suppose you, this is the point which is at x direction x distance and uh, if suppose this is uh, the length d x. So, this is x at x plus d x. So, you will have a stress value of sigma x plus d x at uh, uh, this point. Now, uh, now, we take uh, this height as h and uh, the reduction in this height is uh, d h. So, if this height is h, so in that case uh, you will have this is the half of the distance. So, this will be half d h. Similarly, you will have half d h here. So, so h this will be h and this will be h plus d h. So, this height is h and this side it is h plus d h. So, this half will be d h by 2 and here also you will have half e will be uh, d h by 2 here and similarly you will have half will be d h by 2. So, that will be so this if this is the height h and this is h plus d h this is x equal to 0. Uh, other things are like uh, when you are uh, so this strip which is uh, there uh, you will have uh, uh, it uh, its uh, you know width along, along this. Now, uh, in this case uh, uh, the we have to find what will be the value how you will find the, the stress which is at the you know uh, uh, when it is uh, leaving the die. So, in those cases. So, suppose uh, you uh, do the analysis of the uh, forces balance. Now, what you see is that uh, you have sigma x at this point and this is sigma x plus d x at this point. So, if you look at uh, uh, the, the that way. So, you have sigma x plus d x at this point at this point uh, and your height is uh, h and width is we are taking as constant. So, this will be at h plus d h. Similarly, uh, so this has uh, this is in one direction and 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 uh, uh, this will be the w. So, that will be the you know if you try to find the the you know force which is applied uh, uh, because of the. So, you are height with height you are uh, multiplying with the width. So, you will have the area and that uh, multiplied by the stress. Similarly, and, and on, on this uh, surface you will have sigma x h into w. So, this way uh, you have the uh, you know uh, uh, force balance equation in the x direction. You may have the force balance equation in the y direction and if you take the y direction. So, basically this uh, is uh, 2 alpha. So, you will have uh, similarly you have alpha here. Now, in this case uh, if you look at the uh, die pressure at the two interface. Now, uh, in this case if you take uh, because of this die pressure and if you take the uh, you know uh, uh, force which is up, uh, its component in the x direction. So, that will be basically 2 p into w d x by cos alpha into sin alpha. So, uh, what we see is that your uh, uh, if you look at uh, this and this the addition of them must be equal to 0. So, basically that should be in the equilibrium condition that should be equal to 0. So, sigma x h and w. Uh, so, and then sigma x h d x w sigma x uh, d x d h w and sigma x d x h w like that. So, if you uh, d x and d w term is neglected because they will be the small uh, you know smaller values. So, based on that if you uh, take the balance balance of the forces of uh, force equation if you see uh, you will see in the x direction you will get sigma x d h plus uh, h into uh, d sigma x plus 2 p 10 alpha d x will be equal to 0. Now, similarly you you get the uh, equation also uh, you have the force balance equation may be in the y direction or z direction depending upon the uh, other cases. So, you will have uh, such equation then uh, what you will do is uh, you will also uh, apply for the y direction and from there you will get certain condition. Then uh, you apply uh, the uh, condition of uh, you know yielding and you can apply the uh, you know uh, you can apply yielding conditions 
and from there uh, you will apply the suppose the Tresca criteria. So, in that case uh, you will have uh, the sigma 1 minus sigma 3. So, maximum is sigma 1 and minimum is sigma 3. So, sigma minus sigma 3 has to be 2 k. Now, in this case when we do the balancing for the y direction we see that this is uh, uh, sigma y is basically coming as p. So, you have uh, uh, basically sigma x and, and then that is uh, coming out to be minus p. So, sigma x plus p that will be uh, coming out to be uh, uh, sigma not dot. So, p is coming as sigma not prime minus sigma x. So, this way uh, what we uh, get is uh, now when we integrate that you will get uh, certain equation and on integration you will get sigma x by sigma naught prime it will be ln of uh, h plus constant and then you can have the values of these uh, you know uh, limits because uh, the h will be uh, varying from h to h b. So, you will have uh, the on, on one side you have one height another side you have another height. So, if you do the analysis further so that is why we do this analysis based on these methods what we get is you you get the equations finally you can we can further see we can finally get the equation like uh, h b to h and then we get minus d h by h. So, what we get is you finally get 2 by root 3 on sigma naught ln h b by h. So, uh, this way you can find now in this case if you find if you find the uh, uh, at the exit where h is h a. So, in this, that case uh, sigma x a can be found as 2 by root 3 sigma naught ln h b by h a. So, so this way uh, you, you can also do it in terms of the reduction of area that terminology also. So, what we see that uh, uh, this is uh, the simplest of the approach which is used in the case of the deformation analysis and this is known as the slab method. You have other methods also and most of the time we will deal with uh, the uh, you know calculation of the stresses using this slab method. So, that is about uh, uh, this uh, slab method you have other methods also you can uh, have uh, more understanding uh, about the other methods and we will see how this slab method is applied uh, for finding the you know expressions for the stresses calculation and all that uh, in the different forming processes. Thank you very much.